the production possibilities frontier is a model that will allow us to explore the law of increasing opportunity costs which is related to uh, trade-offs that we talked about in class and that trade-offs are present whenever choices are made you decide to do do one thing you're gonna have to give up something and so in economics when we make a decision to do something well we have to give up the opportunity to do other things and as it turns out that uh, when we decide to do more of one particular action we have to give up more and more of the other one as we trade off resources and so the production possibilities frontier uh, is a simplification of what happens in the economy when choices are made and so there's a quick overview of what we're talking about here we're going to have a an x-axis and a y-axis and then a frontier line that is bowed and it's bowed because it is illustrating the law of increasing opportunity cost and so that's what we're going to look at here in this section also as part of this lesson you will want to spend some time uh, over at Quizlet economics 1-3 there's seven major terms over there to learn and so there's a trade-offs opportunity cost there's the frontier a little bit of cost-benefit analysis and a few other words there to become familiar with as we discuss this so the chart represents uh, various combinations of two different types of uh, products that could be produced in this example and so it breaks it down makes it real simple because there's just two things that we're looking at so here in this particular uh, frontier we could either produce capital goods shown here on the X axis or we could produce consumer goods now there's other models that are used one of the classic ones is uh, guns and butter you see this a lot in textbooks where the economy can produce all guns or it can produce all butter and those are used as an example to illustrate uh, for example if you were to become very uh, militarized in your economy and you're going to produce a lot of uh, defense products or you're going to focus your economy on producing things for your citizens for your consumers uh, represented by by butter so either way it doesn't matter what the particular products are but the idea is that when you make a decision to build or produce one thing over the other you're going to have to give up something so in this example here the economy could choose to produce all capital goods and in this example it would be 50 million units per year and no consumer goods on the other hand if you decided to produce all consumer goods then you could produce 50 million consumer goods and no capital goods or some combination thereof that falls along this frontier the reason it is called a frontier is because this line represents all of the resources that are available uh, to an economy or to a country to produce for example land labor uh, entrepreneurship uh, natural resources so on and so forth so those factors of production that were discussed in a previous uh, section and so if the economy is operating at full potential it could fall anywhere along this frontier and frontier meaning that you can't go beyond it beyond that uh, this is the extent to which uh, the available resources could produce these economic products so point U is unattainable because there's not enough resources to produce at that level uh, the I represents an inefficient region of production because you could produce here but if you were to produce 20 million capital goods and 20 million consumer goods you actually could have produced as much as 43 million consumer goods so that's what this is showing is that you can operate in this zone but it's inefficient because you could have been operating out here so you're not using your resources as productively and as efficiently as possible
Now it is possible for the production possibility curve to shift. And so if you were to try to get to this unattainable region, you would have to have something called economic growth. And so you would expand the frontier, more resources, an investment in education, in machinery, something that would allow your economy to grow so that you could reach uh, a higher potential. And then, of course, the economy could shrink and you'd have less resources available, unemployment, uh, idle factories, maybe production is being shipped to other countries. Something is happening to uh, reduce the available resources to uh, sustain economic growth. And then in this last diagram here, we're looking at uh, a factory that produces digital cameras or DVD players. And so we see the various combinations that management could decide to do. They could decide to produce no digital cameras, and then they could produce 5,000 uh, DVD players. Or they could produce zero DVD players and produce 5,000 digital cameras. So one combination uh, versus the other. Or they could decide to produce at point C, which would be an equal number of cameras and DVD players. So it's just a model to evaluate and get an idea of utilizing resources and evaluating the trade-offs that occur when you make one decision versus the other. Now the reason why the curve is bowed is uh, we'll come back up to the uh, guns and butter to illustrate that because these products are so different. And so they're different because the resources required to make guns are different than the uh, resources to make butter. For example, how useful would it be uh, for uh, dairy cows, which are necessary to make butter, uh, how well could you utilize uh, those resources to make guns? Not very well. Yeah, cows uh, are not too useful for making guns. And so, uh, you know, there's other resources that are involved. Maybe some of the uh, buildings where you keep the cows somehow or another could be converted for uh, factories for making guns. But in any case, it's not a one-for-one -one trade off. If it were a one-for-one -one trade off, you'd have a, a frontier that would look like this. It'd be a straight line. So if you gave up so many uh, resources for butter, you would automatically get the same amount uh, of resources or the same amount of guns produced. So give up resources of butter and uh, or quantities of butter that you produce and you get exactly that many more guns. But it doesn't work that way because as you give up the resources uh, for butter, you can make maybe a few more guns, but not that many more because the resources are so different. So it's just a real simplistic model of what happens in the economy, but it's, it is it is based on what happens out there. That There is just not really easy trade-offs in order to to convert production from one type of product to the other. And so that's why it's bowed, because if you run these numbers out, you will see in this example here, let's say that we want to produce all capital goods. So in order to do that, uh, we'd have to give up all of our consumer goods in order to produce at point F, or 50 million. Well, let's say that we want to start producing at point E. And so at point E, uh, we can produce 40 million capital goods and 20 million consumer goods. But what happens when we go and, let's say, give up another 10 million units and we go from 40 to 30 here at point D? Well, then we could produce 34 million consumer goods. So look what's happened here. The first 10 million that we gave up, we gained 20 million consumer goods. But when we came back and gave up another 10 million, we only gained 14. We went from 20 to 34. So here we went from 0 to 20 and gained 20 million units. But the next time we gave up, 10 million units, we gained only 14. 
Well, what happens if we give up another 10 and go from 30 to 20? And then we're at point C. How much do we uh, gain? So we go from 34 to 43. And so then we only gain 9 units. And, and so this is helping us illustrate the law of increasing opportunity cost, whereby we're having to give up more and more of one resource to get more of the other resource. So let's take a look at it going the other way. What if uh, we're producing here at zero capital goods and producing 50 million consumer goods? So let's say we are at that point and we want to increase to 10 million capital goods. How much do we have to give up? Which would take us from point A to point B. Well, we'd have to give up 2. In order to gain 10, we give up 2 million units of consumer goods. All right, that's fine. Let's move on down to point C. How about if we give up another, t or in increase another 10 million units of capital goods? Then, in order to do that, we'd have to go from 48 to 43, which would be giving up 5. So, the first 10 million costs us 2 million units. The next 10 million is costing us 5. How about at point D? We have to go from 43 to 34. And so then we're having to give up 9. If we move on to the next point from D to E, we're going to have to give up 14 in order to increase by 10. And then to increase another 10 to go from point E to point F, then we have to give up 20 million. So that demonstrates the law of increasing opportunity cost and is the reason why we have a bowed curve.